I trust the sweetest frame but holy trust in Jesus name my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness trust the sweetest frame but holy trust in Jesus name Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm he is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and storm, Dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. Let's pray together. Jesus, once again, um, we're reminded both through your word and through music, the centrality of who you are for everything that we are. Thank you for your sacrifice, for your death, for your resurrection. Thank you for your incredible love for us, for the world and for Europe. Thank you for how you've led us to this point and how you want to continue to lead us. I pray we will be willing, I pray that we'll be humble, and I pray that we'll listen. 
Thank you for this last morning that we have together. May this bring you honor and glory in everything we say and do. Again, I pray for every speaker and everyone who will participate, that they will have the freedom to say what they need to say, and that we'll have ears and hearts that are willing to listen to them and to you. Amen. On our first day together, Gavin took us through building the kingdom of God in Europe and gave us a challenge. And from that morning on, we've been continually, uh, continually challenged. Uh, Jennifer challenged us by reminding us of the builders of the tabernacle, will and skill. And yesterday, um, Yemi talked to us about the builders of the wall and making sure that we're asking questions of, of what is this and then what do we do about it? What do we do about it? And then this morning, we have the privilege of hearing from Kirzi Ruther, uh, Rutherford um, talking about building the church using the book of Acts. Kirzi is a wife and a mom and a pastor located in the capital area of Finland. She's passionate about people, discipling, team building, and leadership. Her greatest desire is to live a surrendered life to Jesus, raise people into their God-given calling, and see God's kingdom advanced through his church. Kirzi is the president of the Alliance in Finland, and she's also been nominated to join the EEA board. So welcome, Kirzi, and we hand this time over to you. Thank you so much, Connie, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's such a privilege and joy to be here with you all. I think uh, I'm not speaking only for myself that I have really enjoyed this time together. So uh, today the theme is uh, Kingdom of God in all of Europe. And the theme of this study that we're about to have uh, is Builders of the Church. And when I was asked to do this Bible study, I prayed right away about what to speak. And immediately a verse came to mind. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Let's read from Acts 4, verses 8 to 14. You can uh, open your Bibles with me. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated common men. They were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. The cornerstone of something is the basic part of on which its existence, success, and or truth depends. So Jesus is the part of church on which the church's existence, success, and truth depends. In relation to architecture, a cornerstone is traditionally the first stone laid for a structure, with all the other stones laid in reference. A cornerstone marks the geographical location by orienting a building in a specific direction. So in this case, we could say that the cornerstone marks the spiritual location by orienting the building, the church, in a specific direction. So my first question for us today is that are we still in that direction? The direction that Jesus oriented the church. In my personal opinion, this pandemic time has been a great opportunity to stop and consider what we have been doing as a church 
and what we should be doing. What I have been doing, what I have been focusing on as a pastor, as a person, and consider what I should be doing and what I should be focusing on. Lately, I have also heard many friends around me study the book of Acts, and especially what the early church was all about. So in the verses we read, the Jewish rulers and elders are questioning Peter and John about a healing miracle that had happened the day before. These religious leaders are annoyed that they are preaching the resurrected Christ when at the same time, already 5,000 men had believed. The religious leaders know that the good news about Jesus is news about a new kingdom, which means a new set of rules, new order of things, a new way of living. So they are not ready to lose their position and role in the society, hence they do everything in their power to keep things as they are. The religious leaders protect their way of doing things, their own status, and at the same time, they are afraid of the people, which is why they let the apostles go free. So question number two, are we as leaders, as builders of the church, protecting our own position, or are we raising up leaders? Are we giving space to people that might be more talented or differently talented than we are? Are we building a diverse team? Are we enabling the reformation that the church desperately needs? We need the right people in the right places. And we need to raise up people like Peter and John, who will not please people but God, who can but to proclaim the good news. Instead of conforming to the world, we are called to influence the world and penetrate all spheres of society with kingdom principles. When Christ is our foundation, we are not afraid to lose our status or position. We are not guided by what people might say or do. Instead, we stand firm in him and on his word. It says in verse 13, that Peter and John were uneducated common men. But as we all know, they were great builders of the church. So we don't necessarily need all the education, merit and decoration. Although I have to say that I'm a big fan of education. But what we really need, what is really necessary is the Holy Spirit. We need a close personal relationship with Jesus. Without him, we can do nothing. And by that, I mean nothing that lasts. I think we all know that as humans, we are able to build great looking things. We have ideas that sound good and look good. But do they sound like God? Do they look like God? Are they God's plans? That's the question. Only on him, with his direction, we are able to build something truly beautiful, something eternal. Building a church means building people. And when we raise builders, we are raising them to build other people. This week when I was reading through the Acts, it was highlighted to me that it repeatedly says, full of the Holy Spirit. In chapter six, where they select the seven men to serve, the qualification for that position was being full of the Spirit. And in the verses that we just read, it says that Peter spoke filled with the Spirit. And another thing that caught my attention was that in Acts, it's very emphasized that it is the Lord who's building the church. It is his church and his plan for the world in which we though get to take part in through the Holy Spirit. So our part is to hear the Spirit and do accordingly. This leads me to think that in the beginning, when the church was born, it was obvious that it was all about Jesus. Only he could heal a crippled man. Only he could bring about an eternal revolution where people's hearts and minds were transformed 
so that a new kind of love and compassion for each other could start to flow out. The love among the early church was visible. They took care of each other's needs, not only emotionally, but also financially. And that's pretty remarkable compared to the current situation where we can't even take tithing granted in our churches. Jesus gives us a new heart and sharing is a mark of the new covenant. So as we read, the early church was born in a difficult religious and political climate. And I think it's safe to say that that is the current situation in Europe also. In Finland, a member of parliament is being prosecuted for quoting the Bible and writing about her biblical views of marriage. The cabinet is very liberal and left, and the archbishop of the Lutheran church is quiet. So what should we do? What is our part in all this as evangelicals, as Christ followers, as builders of the church? I think Peter and John gives us the perfect example. It would be the saddest of days if we would be the builders who reject the stone, if we would be like the religious or political leaders who protect their own status and please people before God. If we would be the builders who talk about numbers, strategies, and marketing, but not about the resurrected Christ. It is time to get a clear focus. We don't need to do a million things. We need to do the right things things that the Holy Spirit guides us to do. It is time to redirect and reorient ourselves and the churches to the plan that God had in the beginning. Also, I want to encourage you all that the words and the promises that God has spoken over your life are still valid. They are still true. Maybe some of us need a reminder today about the about the calling that he has for you, about the calling that he has spoken over your life. It is still on, it is still active, and it is not too late. Our past and the things that have happened to us do not define us. Jesus Christ defines us, and he has a new life for us. He has a new beginning for each and every one of us. When Peter and John got back from the jail among their friends and they told them what, have ha what had happened, their first response was to pray for boldness and for God to move in miracles, signs and wonders. And I believe that this, this same kind of boldness and dependence on God is what we as builders of the church will need this coming season. Paul the Apostle put it in a crisp way in Corinthians. He said that kingdom of God is not about talk, but about power. I close this, this session with the lyrics from the song we just heard this morning. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment and thank you for this time that we spent together this morning. Thank you for the word that you gave us. Please examine our hearts. Please examine our thoughts. Please give us a clear focus on what to do this coming season. We ask that in, in if we face opposition, if we face difficult situations, that you would give us boldness and you would reach out your hand to heal, to heal your people, to heal your land. And Lord, we ask that you fill us with your spirit. Without you, we can do nothing. Holy Spirit, please fill us. Let us hear your voice. Let us see the way you see. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kirzi, for that um, powerful reminder and, and walking through that, keeping Jesus as our cornerstone. Um, we're going to move into a time now of small groups, but before we do that, we're going to just remind you of the two announcements that we had, both on donating to, to the conference, uh, if you'd like to support us in that, and then also making sure that you fill out the survey about the General Assembly. Mm -hmm.